This is a Canyon Lux CFR World Cup, and it's probably one of the fastest mountain bikes I've ever ridden in over 20 plus years of testing and riding them. This is the Mattia Vanderpol edition, but luckily for us mere mortals, you don't need his supreme fitness to untap its potential to unlock the speed this bike offers. Because my goodness, even with me on it, this bike is scorchingly quick, so fast, it's insanely good fun. And for 2023, the CFR has had a big update. New lighter carbon frame, 100 mil travel front and rear, updated geometry, so it's longer and slacker and more progressive than ever before. And in this video, we will review it. I'll tell you how it rides when it comes to climbing, descending, general handling, the suspension performance, point out some cool features and some quirky dislikes and whether it's the right bike for you or not. But first, let's start with price and value money. So this is one of two CFR top line specs. There is one above it, but this one is slightly more affordable. So this model here retails for £6,700, which is a lot of money. But for comparison and context, a similarly spec Trek Supercaliber with the same group set and carbon wheels will cost you £11,000. So this bike is nearly half the price of a Trek. So set against that, it seems a bit of a bargain. And it's dripping in some of the best kits you can buy right now. We have the excellent Shimano XTR 12-speed mechanical drivetrain. And then we have some super juicy Fox suspension front and rear, both controlled by a lockout. We then have some super lightweight carbon DT Swiss wheels on the Exxon DT180 hubs. And on this bike, we have a one-piece carbon fiber handlebar and stem, which we'll talk about more later. And this size large without pedals weighs 10.7 kilos. So a very light weight for what we have here. Thankfully, the range does start at a slightly more accessible 2,900 pounds for the CF model. That has the same frame, but a different carbon fiber layout to bring the price down. And the weight penalty on that bike with Shimano SLX, which is still a great group set, is just two kilos. So two kilos isn't that bad. And you could probably upgrade the wheels and other parts to make that bike a bit lighter. So that bike is probably the pick of the range, as nice as this top end model is. Let me share some likes with you. And one of the biggest benefits for XC riding and marathon racing is space in the mainframe for two water bottles to so leave your hydration pack at home. One really nice detail is the through axle has a lever built into it that retracts and extracts. So no tools needed when you need to change the wheel for a puncher. I love the fact we have the hard wearing and long lasting ceramic speed SLT bearings in both the headset and the main pivot hardware. So a real peace of mind there that it should last for ages and ages. Another thumbs up is tire clearance for up to 2.5 inch rubber. So plenty of space for big tires or mud clearance in the winter. I love the one piece carbon fiber handlebar and stem. It looks super cool. And thankfully the stem length, the handlebar reach and the shape of the handlebar work well for me. So really cool bits of kit. Now, let me share some dislikes with you. And perhaps my biggest one is the lack of a dropper seat post. And I find it really tough to ride a mountain bike without one these days. And it can be dangerous. During testing this bike, I had a few encounters with my, um, my nuts and the back of the saddle, which isn't very pleasant at all. So I take the weight penalty of a dropper seat post over a carbon seat post every day of the week. The downside to this handlebar is if you need a longer or shorter stem or a wider handlebar or a different shape handlebar, you can't easily change it. A big dislike is the way the cables are rooted inside the steering tube. That's something we're seeing adopted from road bikes into mountain bike XE race bikes. They might give a nice clean head tube junction with no ports along the down tube, but you do have the downsides of servicing the headset bearings if you ever need to, which on a mountain bike, when you're riding through the mud and the grit, you might have to. And we still have a tangle of cables around the front of the bike anyway, so that routing isn't really saving much in terms of all this mess and clutter up front. One tiny niggle is adjusting the rebound on a rear shock, which is super fiddly because they recess the shock right into the top tube. So they have this small allen key 
which lives on the cable at the front of the bike and use that to wiggle that rebound adjust it around. Thankfully, it's a job you only really do once or twice on the first ride when you're setting the bike up to your liking. So thankfully you don't have to do that too often because it's a real fiddle, but at least Canyon have thought about that and supply the tool to do it. Right, let's go for a ride. I can share my experience of this Canyon Lux CFR World Cup with you. And well, it loves going fast. The low weight, stiff frame, a firm rear suspension, and a fast rolling tide mean it absolutely blazes on my local trails. And climbing is where the bike really shines. Races are won and lost on the climbs, and the bike absolutely smashes up the climbs. I'm not getting fitter, but I've bagged loads of PBs over the last few weeks of riding this bike. So it must be the bike and not me, right? And there is something joyous about a bike that really helps and enables you to get so fast, designed purely for speed. Nothing else matters. The geometry changes over the old bike at Welcome, longer and slacker, but it's no down country enduro sled. It's a bike that you can hustle down the trails really quickly, but you have to have your wits about you all the time. It's a bike that demands and needs your full attention. You have to be alert all the time. But you can cover ground extremely quickly, but you can't kind of rely on the bike to do it for you. You have to do the riding. You have to be in charge. And XC bikes are definitely getting longer and slacker and borrowing more cues from enduro bikes as the courses get rowdier and more technical. But I don't know how far they will go. But to me, this bike feels more laser focused, more honed in on that pursuit of speed than most other bikes. And even that Scott Spark, which has a sort of wider bandwidth for usage, especially away from the race circuit. So this Canyon Lux is a, a clear and obvious choice if you are going racing. I can't think of a better bike really, especially here in the UK where the courses aren't always super technical. And they are technical, but not like savage. But I haven't been racing yet. Despite that, I've been having an absolute blast riding a bike because despite my increasing age, I still like riding fast and a bike like this enhances your ability to go fast. And I've been absolutely smashing around my local trails, having an insanely good time on a bike because that singular focus on speed acceleration, everything about it just makes you want to ride it fast everywhere. And if you like riding fast, even away from the race circuit, I think you'll like this bike. A few comments on the components on this bike and really there's nothing to fault about the equipment here. That Shimano XTR drivetrain is just wonderful and a real reminder of how good mechanical shifting is. And as popular as electronic shifting is increasingly becoming, I do hope for one that Shimano never ditch mechanical mountain bike shifting. It's so good. Super light shifting at the lever. It's quiet and precise, never misses a beat and no battery to charge up. It is a joy to use. The DT Swiss wheels are definitely a highlight. Nice low profile, wide carbon rims, keep the weight down. Their best 180 hubs super fast engaging a free hub and being DT Swiss are easy to service and maintain and get spares for. And then we have the Maxxis Icon tires, which in a dry conditions right now are fantastic. Super fast rolling on hard pack and on the road. Nice volume as well. So nice low pressures for lots of extra cushioning, which you need because the rear suspension doesn't help you much and good cornering and bite from the shoulder blocks. The only thing I would change about the bike if I was buying it is to find some way to fit a dropper seat post. But that's about it really. I love the handlebar, the ergon grips, everything about it. And of course, I love the way the bike looks. That white to blue fade on a frame and a pop of orange on a forks. I think it looks fantastic. A really smart looking bike. Yeah, I'd happily have this bike in my garage if I had the space and the money. Let's talk about suspension performance and you get 100 millimeters front and rear with Fox dampers, both controlled by a dual lockout lever. The fork is plenty stiff enough for a bike like this, 
and the suspension action is really good. Works well on the small stuff and also handle big impacts well too. And super easy to set up to your rider weight with settings on the back of the fork. So the fork gets a thumbs up from me. The rear suspension, however, is very different. It doesn't bob or move around excessively. It's very firm and very taut when you are pedaling. And sometimes it feels like a hardtail. And a few times I had to check, double check, it wasn't actually locked out because the ride is very firm. I mean, running it quite soft to try and maximize the amount of moves, but it's a very reluctant suspension on small to medium impacts. It works well on big impacts, so roots and rocks and drops, but it's not there to offer a really comfortable, compliant, cushiony ride on rough trails. It's there just to help you go fast when you are racing and riding trails as fast as you can. It's certainly not as compliant as a Scott Spark, which offers more travel as well. So if you're looking for a bike just for cruising around the trails, this probably isn't it. So it's clear the Canyon Lux World Cup is unashamedly and uncompromisingly a bike design for racing and going as fast as you can possibly manage. And if you want to go racing or you want a super fast and efficient trail bike and you like the way the bike works, then it might be the option for you. But the singular focus won't be the right match for everybody. And while I love the speed and focus of this bike, and would definitely have it if I had the money and space in my garage for it, which I don't, the problem lies if you want to do anything outside of that small realm of XE racing and fast riding. So for anything like marathon riding, the Cape Epic, some long distance adventures or even some bike packing, this bike probably isn't the right option. But it seems a bit unfair to criticize this bike for not being very good at something it's not designed for. It's designed for racing, nothing else. And Canyon, to be fair, does offer a bike based on this platform, which has a wider appeal, the Lux Trail, with more travel, slacker and longer geometry. And you can see my review of that bike linked up above. But if you do want to go fast and you do want to go racing, then this is a very, very good option. There are a few compromises in the suspension mainly, but if you can live with that and it works for you, you won't be disappointed. I've had so much fun riding this bike. It makes me want to go racing. And that might be something I have to do very soon. Scratch that itch that I haven't had in a long time. But that's all for now. Hopefully you enjoyed the review. And if you've got any questions, feedback, put them down below in the comment section. And don't forget to subscribe as well. But I'll see you all again very soon. Thank you so much for watching.